What's up, YouTube? It's Eric Ryan's fan. Thanks for clicking on this video. As you guys can tell, I got a little bit of a cold here, so I really do apologize for uh, for that. And it's probably going to be a pretty heavily edited video because of my cold here. If I'm kind of clearing my throat or kind of sniffling or something like that, you probably see uh, a lot of jump cuts in this video. So just be forewarned. Uh, I kind of want to give a couple shout outs to a couple people here. Uh, Everything King, Man Beast Morris, uh, 313JMO, three, Hitman313. Uh, you guys all do great content. Uh, Dion of Detroit, Dion, Dion, I can't remember if it's Detroit, Dion, or Dion of Detroit. Uh, goodness, there's quite a bit of you. Luke G, Derek P. Fields over at the Great Iron uh, Blitz. Uh, there's quite a bit of guys out there that do great, great content, and I really do appreciate. Uh, I, I appreciate getting the chance to get watch your guys' videos, and even though I don't comment, I kind of watch your videos. Um, to everybody out there. So everybody out there, even though I kind of didn't name you guys, I'm kind of looking out here, trying to get some content out here, and hopefully bring your guys's um, your guys's comments and your opinions, and kind of roll them up in here into mine. So you're probably going to be seeing some content based off that uh, here just shortly. But today I'm going to kind of, as you can tell down in the description, I'm going to talk about Michigan State in the 2019 season. We're kind of getting it into uh, with it with the OBS software here in just a moment. But I kind of want to recap. The 2018 season, I got a couple notes that I jotted down here. Uh, I kind of went to uh, fanside.com, which I'll go ahead and put the link down in the description down there. So if you guys want to go ahead and um, read the article there, that's kind of where I got the things. I think the article said that's like the top five, uh, the things that can turn Michigan State around. And I don't necessarily know if I got the heading just right, but uh, you guys will click on it. You guys don't know what I'm seeing on here. So if you guys want to follow along, uh, you guys can go ahead and do that. Uh, and I kind of want to back up here just a little bit to the 2017 season where Michigan State came in at 10 and three, and then Michigan State rolled into the 2018 season, and it was it was a pretty bad season. Michigan State came in at seven and six. They had a pretty bad bowl game, at least bowl game performance against Oregon, which Oregon didn't play all that great either. Uh, that was one where you kind of looked at it and you were like, okay, kind of what's going on here? You know, what's <laughs> it was two teams that really probably really shouldn't have been in a bowl game. Let's Let's be fair and honest. Let's put it that way. Uh, both teams were coming off of subpar seasons. Michigan State, the only reason Michigan State got into a bowl game was because their defense, I think, was kind of was the glue that kept the team together. Because offensive line had some holes. The worky was hurt. Uh, there was the, all, the offense of, of a, as a whole, excuse me, was kind of marred with injuries. And, and, and when you have that, you're not going to win very many football games. You're going to look kind of terrible at it as well. Like I said, the 2017 had a 10-3 season, and there was a bunch of coaching changes that Mark D'Antonio did to kind of shake up the roster, kind of put people around back in their really their positions of strengths other than their weaknesses. And I kind of want to go through that here real quick. Uh, Terrence Samuel, he was the receivers coach. He is now the freshman and defensive back coach, which uh, I believe that that's better, at least what the article read here was a better suit for, for him. And Don Treadwell has experience at wide receivers coach. Now he's the new wide receiver coach here. And you kind of see that reoccurring theme of putting people in the right positions and with their strengths here, which I like what D'Antonio did, but kind of based on what I've seen um, read in the article here. Brad Salem is the new play caller now. I can't remember who was the last play caller. Maybe maybe D'Antonio was a play caller. Maybe he put that, um, wanted to focus on the team more kind of as a whole and kind of a, maybe a, be a kind of a game manager type of person and gave Brad uh, the play calling duties. Uh, Dave Warner is the quarterback's coach, which kind of seems to be he was, I guess he goes back to that role, and that's where he's his strengths are at. Again, reoccurring theme, strengths. Uh, Jim Bowman was the offensive line coach. A lot of thought, people thought he was going to retire, uh, but he comes back. He's going to be back for the 2019 season, helping the offensive line. And Mark Stadium is the new tight ends coach. So people got repositioned. They were... At, I didn't want to go through and put what their former positions were at here, but I kind of wanted to make that, let you guys know that that shift is put in place to have, again, to have people be at their strengths and hopefully the team gets better. And the schedule should be able to um, uh, reflect that here as well. It looks to be a pretty easy schedule. So um, I kind of want to get into the schedule now here, guys. So let's jump in. All right, guys, we have the Michigan State football schedule up here. And like, I, like the last time in the last video, I, where I typed in Michigan kind of football schedule, Michigan 2019 football schedule. I did the same thing here, which is right here on uh, Google. 
typed in Michigan State 2019 schedule, and boom, here we are. We have the schedule up here. Uh, kind of looking at the schedule right now, it kind of looks a little bit favorable for Michigan State here. Hopefully they can rebound. I think the defense, uh, again, in that article that I kind of put a link down in the description here, says that the defense should still be a lead again, and that's kind of, one of the, going to be one of the strong points for Michigan State. It's probably going to keep them in some games here against the tougher competition. Uh, but let's kind of jump in and get right in here. Uh, Michigan State has the first three of the first four games at home a lot like what Michigan had on their schedule. We have Tulsa at Michigan State, which is um, August 30th at 7 p.m., and then we have Western, Western Michigan comes to Michigan State, and then we have Arizona State coming out to play Michigan State. Now, at the last time last year, I think Michigan State went out to Arizona State against, I believe the, oh goodness, I, I, I can see his face, but I can't think of, think of the name. He used to be on ESPN, used to be an NFL analyst um, out there at Arizona State. Uh, and that's kind of, uh, kind of a moot point right now. I see three wins right here for Michigan State. If the defense is elite, is what the article states that it is, I think that the Tulsa, the Western Michigan, and the Arizona State game should be winnable games, as is the Northwestern game when they go at Northwestern on, on September 21st. I, 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 I just kind of like these first three games here. I don't think Tulsa is really much of a pushover, although I really, I'm really i not a fan of Tulsa, so I can't really necessarily say what about Tulsa, the Western Michigan game. Western Michigan usually plays Michigan State tough, but I think Michigan State being at home edges out the win here. And Arizona State, I think, coming out uh, to the Eastern uh, Eastern time zone and without the kids out there, I think the, the time zone is going to be somewhat of a factor. Maybe not as big a factor as maybe I think it will be, but I like Michigan State here to uh, end up with the win. I think, the like I said, the defense is going to be critical here in the Arizona State game because we know how uh, last – or last year, how they kind of scorched Michigan State here for some uh, yards and some points here. So I can't, I don't necessarily think it's going to be too big of a, uh, I think it will be a win, but I'm not necessarily think it's going to be like a 7 or 14 point win, or even a 10 point win. It may be more like, uh, probably I would say less than 7, I'm guessing probably about 4. Um, but I don't want to kind of get into that kind of uh, discussion right now. Uh, Michigan State Northwestern I like as a win as well, even though they're at Northwestern. Uh, this one could be a pretty good game to watch because we know Northwestern has now kind of turned it around. They're kind of being one of the better teams in the Big Ten West out there. Uh, I like to. I might actually sit down and actually watch this game. Uh, right now, it's a two be determined game. If they're three zero, kind of coming in. If Northwestern's three zero, it may get the maybe the Big Ten, maybe the late game on here. I wouldn't keep that out of the realm of possibilities on here, but that looks like a very very good matchup. Uh, for Michigan State, but I do like Michigan State coming out here, so we're 4-0 for Michigan State. Then we come in kind of to the meat of the schedule here. You have five out of the last six games, which are opponents where Michigan can, Michigan State might have some trouble with. I think they win at Indiana, but I think they lose at Ohio State, Penn State, and Michigan, which I already pinned Michigan. If you've seen the last video, I pinned Michigan to win that game anyway. So, But I like the Indiana to win there, and I like them to win against Wisconsin because I don't think Wisconsin – has quite gotten back up to the par. If you see my Michigan video, I kind of made a reference to um, Wisconsin not being back up to par to where they usually are with their uh, with their team right now. So right now we're going to be at so we're at seven and three going along with the win at Illinois because goodness, Lovey Smith there in Illinois. He's like I said in the last video, he's got some work to do down there. So we're seven and three coming out of the Michigan game, and then Rutgers. Michigan State has another win. There's eight and three, and Maryland at Michigan State to round it out at nine and three. I kind of like it at nine and three right here, kind of along with Michigan, which Michigan gets a tiebreaker here. Oh, again, was Ohio State. I think, like I said, I think Ohio State is going to be your West Division champion. And probably, I don't know who's going to come out of the E or excuse me, <clears throat> the East champion. I don't know who's going to come out of the West. Probably be Northwestern. You're probably going to see another Ohio State Northwestern. Big Ten Championship game. Uh, but I think it will be much improved on here. If the article states what the article, or if the article states is, was going to be coming true at Michigan State, I necessarily can't see Michigan State having a good bowl game uh, here. I don't know who they would end up playing here. Uh, they probably might go, they'll probably get a Florida game. I don't think they're going to get a New Year's Six game obviously, but I think they're kind of going to be right in that mix, bumping up right up against New Year's Day. 
I don't know who, like I said, I don't know who their opponent would even be. Maybe you guys might have a better idea. But for me, I like Michigan State's. I like their schedule here. It seems pretty favorable to them. The only, the only hard games are going to be at Ohio State, Penn State, and Michigan. But all the other, all the other ones are wins out of a 12-game season. So out of 12 games, you only have three losses. That's pretty good, uh, pretty good, um, pretty good schedule or a pretty good record here. Uh, like I said, I don't necessarily know a whole lot about Michigan State. Uh, I prefer Michigan as my team and within the state, but really, guys, it doesn't re actually really even matter anymore. Uh, Michigan, Michigan State. I'm old enough now where I just kind of like Big Ten football, and uh, Michigan and Michigan State are the two teams that I kind of are following now. Uh, Michigan kind of more than Michigan State, so I'm going to try to get back up on my Michigan State, uh, my Michigan State news, and along with the basketball and Tom Izzo and all that sort of stuff, uh, which I do like Tom Izzo as a coach too. I'm not, I've always liked him as a coach at Michigan State. I think he was uh, the best fit there for um, after Judd Heathcote left. But that's another story for another time. I don't want to kind of get deviated. I'm kind of starting to jibber-jabber here. So, guys, I like him at 9-3. and three. Uh, Based on the schedule, what you guys seen here, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Is 9-3 and three realistic? Is something like 8-4 and four more realistic? Or maybe even another 7-5 and five season? Is that more realistic? Or do you kind of like him maybe even have a 10 or 11 win season? Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Please consider hitting that subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell notification so you guys get more videos just like this one. All right, guys, I'm. it's early. It's almost 6 in the morning, so I got some editing to do before I get it uploaded to, to, to my channel. So, guys, I really hope you guys enjoy this video and hope to see you guys again soon. Take care, guys.